Why he fighting fighting this? Why what 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 what, what is his goal? Do you understand the words that come out of my mouth? Do you Welcome back to the Immigrant Section. I'm Abbas Wahab, your host in the studio. Today, we got my very good friend, Max Sheldrick. What are you saying, buddy? Not much, buddy. We just went and ate fries. It was great. Um, <laughs> thanks for paying for that. I appreciate you it. You right away talking about the fries, you fucking mooch. I know, I know. I, and thank you for the water, too. <laughs> I, yeah. uh, Max is the type of guy who will show up without his debit card. You know? I will show up without smokes, <laughs> debit card. I will show up. Don't with be proud of it. Car. Don't be proud of it, <laughs> buddy. I'm Windsor all the way. We, uh, <laughs> buddy, Windsor, Ontario. We leached off of Detroit, and look what happened. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> <laughs> so Max is in today. Uh, obviously, I wanted a professionally white representative. So. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Finally, that's what I was like. Anytime I'm listening to this podcast, I'm like, it needs less diversity. <laughs> yeah, straight right? across the board, <laughs> hands down. Dude, you are like. As white as they get, you're a test tube white, from what I understand. Huh? Yes, I, uh, <laughs> I um. D- did you want to talk about that? Oh, absolutely. Max was conceived in a test tube. Yeah, yeah. My, they, uh, he was picked from a catalog. Buddy, it's uh, that's a good bit. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> Don't you fuck with me. I've gotten a lot of good compliments on that. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Windsor, Windsor is a pretty like crazy diverse place, though. Okay, well, let's be fair. I'm originally from Chatham, but uh, Chat, uh, Windsor, uh, small town in like. Ontario, Canada. Yeah, it's here. like 30 minutes outside of a... Inside. What's the population of Chatham? 30,000. Yeah? Yeah, very What's, small. Very small, very white. And what you tell me the average uh, summer job was in Chatham? Uh, corn to tasseling. Yeah, what's that? What we would do... It's so <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's white? It's, the, like, uh, it's, it's only something that me and other Chatham guy, guys relate to. Like, anyone, any one of your listeners are going to be like, what the fuck? No, explain but, it, explain Okay, it. what we would do is they would load up, uh, we would meet at the No Frills. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the most small town, like, starting the point. No Frills. There's only one. No and Frills we, fucking grocery store. We would all meet there, and um, there would be like 300, 400 kids. 400 high schoolers, maybe even, uh, I think, uh, once you hit 13, you were able to do this job. But they would load us up all in the, these buses. And they would drive school us buses, out. like yeah, uh, school buses, yellow ones. Yep. <laughs> and they would drive us out to these fields. And what you would do is you would walk down the row and just for eight to twelve hours a day, you would pick tassels as you walk down the cornfield. And it was the most monotonous thing. And you'd maybe make like two thousand dollars in the summer. That's crazy to me that getting kids to do it is cheaper than. Having that that big machine that goes and just like sucks up those corn plants and like it has a spinning thing, is it doing the same job? No, that's not the that's not the same thing. That's a cultivator. What uh what we're doing is that's seed corn. So it uh there's a there's a row of male plants and like male corn plants and there's a like a side by side it's female plants. You gotta pull the tassels off the female plants so that they can pollinate. The males can pollinate. God damn, and then you guys all just go square dance after. <laughs> yeah, entirely. It's it's a thing. It's a good thing. You've had like a million jobs, dude. It's fucking crazy. You're just like I've I don't know. I've I've had um yeah, you're you're not far off. I'm but I'm done with those jobs. I can't I can't you you did corporate. How did you like you were making Corporate's the worst, yeah. You were making six figures. I was making decent money. Uh, yeah, decent money. Six figures is decent money. <laughs> but you make six figures, you get a, a expensive place. You spend what you make, right? It's all in proportion. So it's like you, don't you get have a nice to place. Spend what you uh, make, oh, though. absolutely. You don't have to. But what happens but in reality? I <laughs> what happens in reality when you have like all this surplus where it's like let's say you get the the budget option that you had to get back in the day and then you have all this surplus of disposable income you don't just i mean if you're smart you, you know you invest it you do this and that but i wasn't it was my first time like getting a hold of good money so you just end up spending bro okay. i had a fucking stupid lease but it was fun right oh yeah it was it was amazing. the funnest time of your life right like i don't know let's about that. No, 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 no was it not when you traveled the world was that not fun that's where you pull all I your was material traveling from to, right like, well i have a lot of travel material but the f- traveling was really more of like filling a hole you know because you weren't because okay, right. you weren't doing something passionate 
Yeah. So you're like, you have three weeks vacation, you have disposable income. I got to go somewhere. I got to ball out. I got to do something crazy so I can talk about it when I go back to the office and fucking feel like I lived and like make it to the next time I could take a week off, you know? <laughs> so Bali was crazy. Is everyone still sad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, still sad yeah, as yeah shit. Everyone's still sad. <laughs> the worst was when you come back uh, when you're in the office and like a coworker went to Cancun or some shit. And she'll always be like, oh, I didn't want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> shut up, Karen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You shouldn't have come back, Karen. Uh, and like for a whole week after, <laughs> I didn't want to. You just see her every time you run by the staff room, she's showing someone else the fucking by the beach. <laughs> Photos. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> want to come back. God. Like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fair. Honestly, I couldn't. I couldn't stand corporate. Like, you know, I, big. Granted, you I get only work. I quick. worked. Yeah, I, I get fired. I did get fired very quick. Because uh, you speak your mind, you got that white privilege where you're like, "Hey, this is not okay." Like, like yo, yo, you know what it is? You're the type of guy where it's like, if if they ask you in a job to do something with a ladder that's like kind of unsafe, you would just be like, like. Whereas migrant workers or like someone doesn't want to push it or like stand okay. out, they'll just do it. You'll be like, "Oh, uh, this isn't safe." <laughs> okay, I used to be I used to be the guy who would just do it, but I've thrown my back out four times being that guy. So at this point, I'm like, "No, fuck that." And honestly, if a job gets, I'll weigh out the pros and cons of the job every single day now. I will ne- like if absolutely because and especially if it gets in the if it starts getting in the way of comedy where I like I start if I can't take gigs if I can't because of can't like do- physical strain or something yeah. I like when I was doing uh when I was doing Uber Eats like on the bike I was I knew for a fact that like a, what was it maybe a month and I'm like I can't sustain this there's no way there's no because possible- you were literally pedaling too yeah i'm pedaling and on top of that you can't <laughs> eat enough and even if you get maintain your calorie intake yeah you have to sleep like at least 10 hours a day to maintain the actual your hormonal balance just to oh. actually to actually be normal still yeah. the, it's not possible there's no possible there's a guy out there right now i guarantee who's making two thousand dollars a week <laughs> yeah he's still out there i still see him on his bike like on the little motorcycles or his biking? Name's, uh, fuck, what is it? Uh, Mateo, I think his name. Uh, he he works for Uber Eats, Skip the Dishes, and one other one. But he makes two. Th- he is the highest earning Uber Eats dry- or biker. Which in sounds the city. sweet, but the dark he's reality so... of it is that he's got all those apps on twenty four seven. Probably, yeah. He probably like. He's out every dinner. He's out every lunch. He's out every breakfast. He's out like yeah, he in the has, middle of the he night. No other he's life. the one guy in the middle of the night that's always available. I I can't imagine what he does with the money. I'm assuming he like he he, he lives probably just covers medical conditions, man. Like that shit is yeah. gonna lead to fucking issues. You're gonna be sick all the time. Your ass, man. You ever bike so much? Your ass gets sores. Yeah. You, you need cream and things to dress those sores. The Dude. money goes to the no, the money he, just goes to the ass creams, bro. Let's be you honest. You see his bike though. Like his bike is, is like he it's a road. Like he's got the e-bike. He's got those uh, pedal assist ones, one of the ones that I had. So but, you pedal and then it, it gives you propulsion. Yeah. Yeah, with like did a you battery. Did try the one? No, I did try. Just like the, you know, just to give a general idea yeah, of but what we're talking about. Those battery those batteries only last about if you're using it on eco mode, then it's like four hours, but you'll burn yourself out. You will burn yourself out after five hours of biking. There's That's no way funny. around that. Because it sucks. Because I remember I was at the Uber office when I like first moved to the city and I was doing Uber. And they had your bike up in the corner. I don't know if you exactly. bought it through Uber. The exact no. bike. The green no. and everything. And they had it up and they were like, make X amount. You know, they have like the little marketing promotion thing that shows what you can make, how much you pay, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I was just, it looked legit. I'm like, man, that's sick. You get that, you rent that, you make a decent amount. But you never think about the fact that, yo, your whole energy is operating this. And now the rest of your day has to go to, like, trying to, like, recover to, like, biological stability, you know? Dude, you can't, like, there's nothing that's going to recover it aside from hours and hours of sleep. There's, no, like, you can get your eight hours at night. But when you're doing that much cardio throughout the day, you're that's not going to cut it. And especially if I'm doing comedy at night. It's not. It, I did you see me like when I used to when I used to. You were thin Uber. as fuck, right? You were like thin a twig. As, I was thin as fuck. <laughs> I, I've gotten. I've, I'm. I'm eating well now. Yeah, I'm, you're living well, bro. I can see it. You but, got the um, belly of a king. I know. King. I, I know. It looks good. It looks good. Eh. Well, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. 
But yeah, dude, those those jobs fucking sucked. Like, uh, what was what were you working when you first started comedy? Program manager in the, in like uh, in Detroit. I was a program manager, so I worked for a company that made fuel tanks. Yeah. And what I would do is I would so you know the Ram fifteen hundred. Okay. It's got an eco diesel version. God, I gotta tell you, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I really, okay. Once you start going into this, I really don't care. <laughs> okay, the eco diesel version of the Ram fifteen hundred. Oh God, he's still going into it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Uh, let what me I describe ask, what I did, bro. Okay, what I was gonna ask is, did you have a turning point? Was there a turn? Was there an, like an actual definitive click where you're like, I can't do this anymore? Yeah, well, my brother, gotta, when my I brother passed fucking... away. That's when my, right. When my yeah. brother passed away, uh, so my brother passed away about March of 2017, so just about two and a half years ago. Mm. And I started comedy the December of, before that, three month, three four months prior to that. And I was doing comedy. I did maybe comedy eight times. I was already in love with it, but yep. I was very scared of like because I bombed so so hard the first couple of times. I was like a going Everyone does, one though. open mic a week. Yeah. Like trying to write in between and get a new set and all that stuff, yeah. but but I was going back to the office, blah blah. blah. I was working the office life, but after my brother passed away and I went back to the office, it didn't make any sense anymore. Like being in a cubicle, no, and knowing oh, I already dipped my foot in stand up, and I was like, oh, this is this is my thing. You know what I mean? Now it fully like it just accelerated. And right after he passed away, I moved to San Francisco, and when I moved there, I was just like. A hundred percent. I was doing it every night, pretty yeah. much, almost. You did a what was it? You you did the Detroit scene a little bit. You did New just Way? a couple of months. New Way Bar at Ferndale. Uh, Mar Mark Ridley's fucking... Comedy Castle. I used Mark to send... Ridley's um, is amazing. It's a like, great room, hands but... down, one of the best clubs in in the states. Great room but, in the uh, states. Yeah. I don't know about that. Maybe yes. Michigan. I don't know about. The... I mean, come on, bro. How many clubs have we personally checked out in the states, dude? Uh, I don't know. A handful. Mark, Mark Ridley's is up there. Mark Ridley's is a great room. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. I kept sending yeah. in for their Wednesdays, their little amateur night. Yeah. They never got back. So well, I just went to New A Bar, a standard pub open mic. What was his, what was his fucking name that ran? Amit? Amit? Amit James. Amit, yeah. Fucking has the same 20 minute. He's I'm going to just do a little bit of a time off the top. You fucking 20 minutes. Yeah, he had the one bit um, about jerking off with one headphone in. I'm a non threatening man. <laughs> fucking loser. He was an engineer too. He was an yeah. engineer at Ford. Mm -hmm. Another immigrant engineer who also does stand up, huh? It's a fucking yeah. cliche now. Of course, but um, yeah, you did that, and uh... yeah. How many years did you spend in Windsor? Because Detroit, just uh, for um, so people know, Detroit, Michigan, obviously, uh, pretty much borders Windsor, Ontario. Like the it Canada is, and the states pretty meet much, at Detroit border, yeah. and Windsor. So right on the so Windsor is the town that's pretty much piggybacked off of Detroit's economy. So many people in Windsor travel across the border on a daily basis to work there. So a huge yeah. portion of of Windsor Tonians, whatever you want to call it. Windsorites. Windsorites? Yeah. <laughs> I love that you knew right away. Windsorites. It's it's Windsorites. I live there. What the fuck? I'm like, I love how you knew it. Yeah, I live there. What the fuck? Super known for uh pizza, weirdly enough, Windsor and yeah. the Lebanese. The Lebanese guys, kill that pizza out there. Guy, we do got good pizza. Um but uh, there's also, like, there's an entire range of pizza that, like, we'd get, like, $5 pizzas there. You know what? Never mind. You know what? This, <laughs> is, going, are, this is going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I love that. You're, like, you're attacking me on, like, I don't want to hear about the eco diesel. And then, but you're also Let stepping you, back on the pizza thing. Let me tell you something about You're setting pizza. the bar too high for what's acceptable, bro. <laughs> you know. It's all Gucci. Oh what I want to know is the ethnicities that you hate. Don't <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> the door locks. <laughs> yeah, and then yo, yo, we should just be like. So, anyways, and then we just like do a hard edit, and that's and that's them in order. Yeah. Um. Well, let's start with my wife. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. right. Um. But yeah, I. Uh, fuck. What were we going back to? Max has a black wife. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's great. Dude, dude, I've always. Having a black wife and like uh, addressing it and using it as a thing on stage as a white guy is a tricky thing because I, I audience I know I know I know but audiences sometimes the way you can use it it can look like a scapegoat like hey like you know what I yeah. mean so it's like a fine line to walk to mm -hmm. just... when I was in a when I was doing a Michigan last like uh, what was it a few months ago and um 
I just dropped the fact. I was like, yeah, my wife's a, I got a black wife. And then this girl in the audience, like it was, it was in a very combative room all the whole night. Of course. This girl was like, why'd you say it like that? <laughs> <laughs> like what? Well, it's just she's a like, fact. She's like, why, why'd you say it like that? Like it just sounded fucking weird. <laughs> I'm like, I think you're hearing it weird. Was <laughs> <laughs> it a packed audience? Oh, no, no. It was like, it was a group of, uh, I think it was like 20 people. Okay, it was a, okay, it was okay, a small okay. bar, but it was like, it It was only them. Like, it was just, it was a group of, it was it was kind of like an ambush show. Oh, like, uh, dude. So I no... just had an ambush show yesterday. Here, it's I, Sunday, dude. Can I finish? Yeah. yeah, yeah. This, this was, uh, I still look back on this and I just laugh because I, at one point throughout the show, I'm just like, all right, I'm not winning these guys. Like they, there's no way to win these guys over yeah, at, yeah, yeah, at yeah. this point. And, um, so, uh, one of this guy was like, he's like, so where's your wife? <laughs> <laughs> she's back in Toronto. And she's like, yeah, why? Uh, like, cause she's got a good job. And they're like, Oh, so she makes all the money, and I'm like, well, some of it. And they're like, well, you get to follow your dreams. <laughs> and I'm like, what's well, happening? She said, she said uh, well, my wife said to me that uh, she wants one of us to follow our dreams. And I was like, and it was me. <laughs> <laughs> and you did a little dance just like that. They Straight fucking up. hated oh, you, bro. Hated you so ran much. right to your car and bo- yo, 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 tell the story of the one time you and uh, Scotty were at that black room. Oh god, and you had to book it out of there. Oh, he was such a. You fun- don't even have to say names. Okay, um, <laughs> it, was such- uh, it was in Southfield. Um, so Southfield, Michigan, right, right around Detroit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Scotty's done well there. Like yeah. that's the thing. He came in there with with confidence, but he was trying this bit. I. I don't know what the bit was for. I don't know where it was going to go. <laughs> yeah. But he, he started, like, I, I, I got done my set. It went well. <laughs> like, it went good. I got paid already at that point. And Scotty starts his set, and he's just like, so, uh, so I, I, I eat chicken, you know? Just like you guys, all black room. <laughs> <laughs> Super white skateboarder kid just, looking. And the thing is that he didn't keep going. He paused. <laughs> to let it, like, and, sink? And, and, then it, like, <laughs> and then it's like, you know when it's like that half beat, like that beat when it's like, oh, now it's awkward? Yeah, yeah. And then he kept waiting. And then he's like, oh, so, uh, chicken. <laughs> he just kept saying chicken. And the producer comes up to me. He's like, hey, did you guys drive here? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, okay, well, uh, I'm going to let you out the back. You're going to pull the car around. And uh, you guys got to fucking leave right now. No. <laughs> we just gunned it. He was just offending people up there, huh? Oh, straight up. Did like, the audience they, look angry? Oh, entirely. They they were not. It was not. <laughs> like, this is the type of bar that you had to actually buzz into. They look through a camera, make sure you're not wearing gang colors, and then they buzz you in. Jesus. Like, you have to. And it was you, him, and who else? Uh, Paul, Paul Montaigne. Shout out to Paul. So you guys were doing just three, they booked three just white comics for this show? Who's, was it? No, Paul had the in. Paul had the in. Um, Do they have a black headliner? Yeah, it's like, it's a, it's a local, it's a local show. So okay. So it's like, a, there's, there's a whole, like, there's a whole scene there. Like, no, they, I get it, yeah, 100%. Thing is, but... uh, it's, um, it was weird how they booked it, and it was weird how they paid, because the, the producer also paid. Uh, based on how much he liked your set. <laughs> so subjective as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Paul got $20. I got 70 <laughs> Dude, that, that fucking car ride was awkward as he fuck. He was eh? so fucking mad. He's like, I'm not paying gas. I'm like, the fuck you are? <laughs> that was probably one that of the most heated. That was merit-based. That shit was performance-based. Shut that, the fuck up. That was one of the most heated arguments him and I have ever gotten into. And like, that's the most heated argument I've ever gotten into with a comic, which is why nowadays i pick my battles <laughs> like, dude that's nope. you have uh, so in comedy one of the uh in like any town's comedy scene wherever you are a major asset is having a car oh, the yeah. average comic is broke so there's always a, just a handful in the scene who have a car and then they're the drivers to the out of town gigs blah 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 What's weird about driving like in comedy is like there's no standard gas price that's 
No. Every time you go on a show, there's someone at the end they go, "So, how much do you want?" <laughs> you just you just have to feel them out. You know, you're trying to guess how much they got paid, how far they went, how little they know about cars and gas consumption. I- there's so many factors of like. Sometimes it's like, oh no no, it's 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 good. Like don't like you know what I mean. Like some comics, you you're like, you're so shocked that you even took them. You're like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And then some, you're like, twenty bucks. They're like, but, but it was a thirty minute round trip. It's like, yeah, gas is expensive right now. <laughs> Dude, what happened? I I still laugh about the time when you uh you went down to Hamilton. What what was his name? He folded how many? He folded it up. Buddy, fucking. Five. So one time I I take I'm in a Hamilton show. I'm in a show in uh, Hamilton, Ontario. I drive the entire lineup: the headliner, the feature. I was opening and driving, and there was another opener. Four people in my car. We do the show. Great set. Everyone's great sets. It's a great show. At the end, the showrunner uh, hands me a little wad of cash, and I look that it's rolled up. And when I unroll it, it's a five. <laughs> and when I look back up, he was already 10 meters away from me. Booking it. Just gone. I'm like, that motherfucker. I was just like, I didn't know. I was like, do I make a scene? Am I am I a bitch if I don't say anything? Like, I'm just <laughs> running this voice in my head. Like, wh- wh- like, is this, is he, is this. Okay, what can you do? Is he stepping on my honor? Like, is it like juggling pride and all that shit in that moment? What did you do? Dude, I just ended up like he did. He dipped. He get, he paid everybody the money, and he just dipped. He booked it. He he knew it was some fucked up amount. It was it's, such a. I mean, I haven't done it since, but the headline and the feature ended up tossing in some stuff. So I ended up covering my gas. I mean, it was a loss otherwise, right? Yeah, of course. But that's so fucking funny. <laughs> some people are fucking ridiculous, man. Dude, comedy sucks. Comedy's got some comedy sucks just a lot. True of assholes, in it, you know. <laughs> did I tell you? Did, did I tell you this story about the last like? What was it? The last, uh, second last time I did Windsor, right before the club closed. <laughs> no, what happened? <laughs> okay, so I go down there and I, I'm meeting Paul there, just because we're gonna we're gonna have a few beers. We're hanging we're hanging out, and we go downstairs, and there they had renovated. But the entire time I've ever lived it or done done the Windsor Club, it used to be the Comedy Quarry. At nine o'clock every night, they'd there'd just be this raw sewage smell that would just Permeate. They're like, oh yeah, it's the pipes. <laughs> you can't oh. fix it. No, we can't fix it. And there's just all these other fucking problems with it. But one, uh, one thing in particular is there, there on the ceiling in one particular area there was a, a bubble, like a drywall bubble, where um, so condensation was uh, it had fallen through, and they just duct taped over it. <laughs> Just like the ceiling's black, the duct tape's black. It'll be Smells fine. Smells like shit. <laughs> but listen to these jokes, you know. Oh, so what happened was, is that the night that I go down there, uh, the duct tape had fallen, and there was, it, it was apparently from a leak from the men's washroom at the top on the top floor. Of course. It's not just water. So God it was, forbid it's just all, water. No, no, yeah, not no, just water. No, just no. nothing but stagnant. Piss and shit. I mean, and who knows it, what it it's is. Ca- it's caked over tables. We just <laughs> they throw up one of those uh one of those you know when they make the lanes for uh, for like a movies line movie lines and stuff like that. With like the those, velvet rope. Yeah, the velvet yeah. ropes. They just <laughs> they just they're like no one's sitting back here. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> they they, they blocked it off with velvet as they, if it's like a. They bleached it. They bleach the floors. They uh, they get some scented candles. They uh, they, they for breeze. <laughs> then the flies came. <laughs> the flies. The flies. <laughs> I swear to God, it was like <clears throat> the owner. He was like, he, I I wasn't even looking at the stage, but he's like, he comes up to me. He's like, he's like, hey, hey man, um, can you just not mention the flies? I'm like, what? <laughs> He, just, he points and like there's that, there's hundreds of flies just buzzing around the spotlights. <laughs> <laughs> just like Jesus, fruit flies are like full flies, full black flies. Oh like, my just god, dude! Thick fucking horse fly size things. And uh, right as he's about to bring me up on stage, and he he said he told everyone he's like, please don't mention the flies, guys. Like, look, it's bad, but please just don't. <laughs> 
right as he's about to bring me on his stage, he uh, he's uh, he's hosting and he's like, "Okay, guys, I just want to apologize for these flies." <laughs> <laughs> As I'm doing my set, there uh, there was a there's a group in the front row, and I was counting how many flies were landing in their drinks and just dying. Oh my <laughs> god! They tried to get the the show went like the show was still fun, like it was still fun. But the fact is that they they had they weren't gonna pay for their drinks, but the bar upstairs, they were like, uh, they uh. Uh, what was it? Scott, <laughs> Scott <laughs> from the other story. <laughs> Scott, gone. He was bartending, like he was just doing the weight gig, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, they don't want to pay for the, for the drinks," and they're like, "Well, they have to pay for the drinks." And he's like, "But there's flies in the drinks." <laughs> and they're like, "Well, well, what do you want us to do?" Well, we're running a business here. Sorry, but uh, we're not gonna do that. And they would, they forced this couple that was there for wow. the 30th anniversary to pay for the drinks. This is the bar upstairs. This isn't the club. They were like, please, can you... Oh, it's two different businesses. Yeah. Gotcha. Two, two different businesses, so... That's fucked that they still... How did that even... Ha- what? Flies in the drink? How can you force anyone to pay for that? I don't know. But either way, uh, that, I believe, like a week after, Sean, the the other owner of the place, he pulled out entirely. He was like, nope, done. And then, like, two months later, it fucking ended. <sighs> Comedy clubs are a tricky business, man. Dude. The fucking tricky business. It's not like the 80s or whatever. Apparently, it was like a huge boom. There used to be like eight clubs in like a four block radius. Everyone's yeah. just going to watch comedy. There ain't shit There's going Netflix on otherwise. There's Netflix now. There's fucking internet. No one wants to fucking leave the house anymore. You can just order everything in through Amazon now. You got Amazon Prime, Crave. It's so good. Netflix. Though, huh? Yeah. It's so good. I want to, I know it's like, are you going to spell doom? Are you going to plug a Amazon Prime right now? You got the spot on the boys. Oh, shit. That's actually, I'm not even supposed to say that, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> if you watch Amazon Prime's The Boys, check me out, season two, episode eight. <gasps> cool. I bring, uh, do you guys know, I <laughs> remember Gus from, uh, what's the guy, Giancarlo? Gus from um, Breaking Bad? Yeah. So I bring his motherfucking ass a fresca. <laughs> no you, lines. Wait, I have, just bring him a fresca, and then and then my I'm an assistant to some guy who goes, "Would you like a fresca?" And then <laughs> Gus goes, "No, it's terrible stuff." And then I go, "Ah, of course," and I and I walk off. So wait, do you, dude? I want to. I want to say that guy. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't want to talk shit or whatever, but like this is. I don't know if this is how like the whole acting scene is and all that, but. We're on set. We're in an old mansion. The scene is taking place in the dining room of an old mansion. Okay. I'm my role is the assistant of some high level dude, okay. and this high level dude is having a conversation with another high level dude played by Gus. They're talking. I come in. I serve the fresca. Right. So this scene, they're going back and forth. They do a lot of talking before the fresca and after the fresca. Right. There's a lot of pre and post fresca talk. Right. <laughs> Shut the fuck. But the point is, you know, the point is, it's an old mansion, so all the crew is standing on creaky hardwood floors. So sometimes uh, Giancarlo or Gus would be, like, talking, and then one time all you hear is creaking, and, and dude, I'm just in the kitchen, and all I hear is him, like, doing his lines, and then the lines stop, and he goes, I hear talking! I hear talk. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? We're filming a TV! And he stands up, and he starts pacing back and forth. <laughs> Cause we're filming a TV show here, like, and then he literally goes off, right? He goes yeah. off, and then he goes, "Okay, you know what? How about you get me when you're ready?" And then the director comes up and starts pleading with him, pleading, "Oh no, we're, we're ready. Please, we're gonna guys. run. Yeah, we're gonna. Uh, sorry, everyone's and everyone is like <laughs> holding their. Everyone is at, treating like, everyone is acting like royalty, like the king just got fucking pissed. Everyone's holding their breath yep. and not moving. You know what I mean? And then the the director pleads with him, and then at the end he goes, "It was the weirdest thing ever. I don't understand why, but he goes." Let's play poker, and what? then and then he starts the scene again. What? I don't. I swear to God. Let's play poker. I don't know. I don't do know if he know looked at other? the other. Like... I, I don't know if he means like let's act, or I don't know if it's like a tongue twister thing that helps you prep for a scene. These are all veteran actors, so I don't know. But I was like, what the fuck is he? Is do they give him room, or like do they allow him to act like this because he's? in character or some shit like that because he's playing i don't know you know I, i'm like is this allowed well when you get to that level buddy super <laughs> diva shit i was like jesus Christ, because he's just straight up berating the set 
He stood up. He, he's seated in the sea, and he stands up, and he and he starts walking back and forth. Like, what are we? We're feel like it's like a general addressing like a shitty platoon. He was like, what the fuck? I've been like. I haven't even seen this kind of shit in the Navy. You know <laughs> what I mean? You, did you like look through the? Did you like look through? I, the, like, I talked. Creaking creak the door and just like. <gasps> yeah. To be honest with you, I, I turned to one of the girls who was prepping the frescas because every time I would do a take, they'd have to re-prep the frescas. <laughs> and then I was like, "What a prick!" <laughs> and she goes, "Who?" <laughs> 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 We've been on set with him for days. Oh man, was he yeah. cool? Didn't he speak to me once, bro. <laughs> of course, didn't he exchange did. a single word with him. And uh, we yeah. shuttled together. It was it was weird. We shuttled together him and like the other actor. Mm-hmm. They talked to each other for the whole scene for eight hours, like a lot of dialogue. And then the shuttle on the way there, no no exchange of words. Wow. I didn't think anything of it until the scene happened. I was like, Jesus, they didn't say a, a word to one another on that shuttle ride <laughs> to the set. <laughs> and then they just faced each other for six hours. Like they weren't like. They're, I guess that's, that's a professional. pro actors, right? They weren't like, I was thinking about playing it soft at the beginning, you know, like they weren't doing, they didn't even exchange words. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, it's interesting, man. Yeah. This, set, this dynamic on set, to be honest with you, I don't like it. I don't know how much. Uh, it's a lot of waiting. Yeah. It's all waiting. Did but I had my own trailer. It was nice. I had a shower in it. I've been watching your Instagram stories. Was <laughs> I was it? like, should did I take a shower? <laughs> did, you have to do, did you have to do, how many times have you had to play a slave? A yeah. slave? <laughs> what was that? No, I never had to what play a slave that? once. <laughs> what were you wearing? <laughs> Is that not a what slave? the context was? No, from... no, 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 no. There's a show, some Netflix show, 2020. I was playing background as a, a pirate. Oh. I was playing a pirate. Uh, uh, and oh. I wasn't even Somalian, which is the twist. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the back. Like, what do you? What do you? And they're like, No, no, it's it's not small. Sorry, I uh, I misinterpreted that <laughs> Instagram story. No, there. it was very slavish what I was wearing, and I was making a lot of slave jokes. I, I was pretty much okay. dressed up in like okay. Then I didn't. I wasn't. I those I didn't clothes were actually hundred year clothes, man. Really? Yeah, the way they dress you up in legitimately ancient clothes. They don't create clothes that look. They just why. They just, all the old clothes that made it through all this time, yeah. these sets acquire them. Like, studios acquire them for their costume department. Jesus. Yeah, like, the this sh- the shit I was wearing was just unbelievable. That's why I look slavish. That's what, Super, You know what I mean? Was it gross? Some of it was fucking just smelled like ass. They can't, I'm assuming they, they can can't wash They can dry it. clean it or, like, yeah. some chemical, like, spot treatment stuff. Yeah, but some of it smelled like, like straight up shit. ass. Yeah, yeah, ass, dude. It was the worst. But <laughs> that's Hollywood, right? That's, yeah, Hollywood. that's that's how it goes. That's Hollywood. That's yep. Hollywood. Oh, that's maybe the game, just, baby. Maybe they so, just send that shit up to Canada. Who knows? Uh, Max and I, we well, as soon as I moved to Toronto, we actually started a a sketch comedy group called Plus Time Comedy. Yeah, actually, if you check it out on YouTube or Instagram, we have like almost forty or fifty sketch videos. We had big dreams, we man. Got, we got to delete some of those. Yeah, uh, dude, we had. Okay, so you can see yeah. if you check those sketches out, you can see a clear like ev- like uh, evolution of like our ability to shoot stuff and write stuff. At the beginning, it was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah well, there is some stuff I would. There is like we should probably consider taking off the oh, early yeah, ones. Sure. The oh yeah, ones? yeah, the ones where I was like, "Oh, I got a good idea. Let's just set up two cameras, and we'll have witty banter." <laughs> yeah. It was all banter shots. We thought we could just set up two cameras. We're funny then, enough. Yeah, exactly. We can do that. And Gee. then we were doing this. No. Like right now, the way it's shooting, we could probably. This is do. exactly. This what is we exactly did. what it was. What yeah. was what was the one bit we did about the lozenges? How did it go? I I don't even know. <laughs> That's how dumb oh, it was. Oh, rice and venison. How did that one go again? Oh yeah. Well, the thing is, Johnny was <laughs> ba- Johnny Bad. Yeah, he like, wrote that one. He's like, uh, I was like, we, I was like, oh man, we got to go to this place. Uh, it makes the best white supremacist. And you're like, what? White supremacist? I'm like, no, rice and venison. <laughs> and then I go, ah, okay. <laughs> and I just do a weird look. <laughs> Done. <And> that's <laughs> it. so fucking stupid. Let's pull that shit off for sure. Bro. Yeah, there's some definitely some dumb ones that we gotta fucking get off there. <sighs> it's tough. It's tough because it's like Dude. making a good video isn't enough, you know, because we're at this stage of the internet where there's just like the golden area is when a new platform comes out and put in contact then on, on that new platform. That's why like a lot of people are like, oh, get on TikTok. TikTok is the next thing, right? Yeah. YouTube back in the day when like Frank, like remember when YouTube was old? Remember Frank Caliendo's impressions? 
that was one of the most popping videos on YouTube. That, the history of dance, right? I can't, uh, I can't remember those. Those but... were all the original popping off. Uh, somebody Gonna Get It Hurt Real Bad, oh, Russell yeah. Peters, all those. Or even like, a, do you remember Angry German Kid? No, what's the how did that one go? The kid, he, he like breaks his keyboard. He, it's a, it's a whole thing. I think it was a, about Unreal Tournament. Dude, there's like Angry German Kid. There's Sneezing Panda. Sneezing there's, Panda, yeah, all uh, those ones. South Park even covered them pretty yeah, much. Yeah, like those all original those guys, the Star viral Wars kid, videos. Yeah, yeah, the original viral videos. But now, like, man, you can get like, especially with the algorithms. Like people can't even find. It's all about serialized they content. They can't find any of our our channel for like a week. Yeah, it's all about serialized content. You gotta have episodes. You gotta have like because YouTube needs to be able to recommend your next piece of content after that person watched that video. Because YouTube's whole goal is to keep people on the site as long as possible. Yeah. So having a one-off funny sketch video is nice, but it's like it doesn't put you on YouTube's recommended. Yeah. For other people, like. It's a tough game. It's just like I think you just got to keep getting better and then when you're at the point where you're you are ha you have a level of skill in what you produce yeah. that also lines up with a new platform emerging and then you take your cultivated shit and you put yeah. it on the new. That's how stuff pops off. I think we need to I think we should like when we find the time. We well, we got go micros back. coming out. Yeah, we ooh, got the ooh, should, ooh, I haven't even announced that yet. No? So, uh yeah, let's just make it right now. So Max and I, we wrote and produced a, a web, web series, series yeah. essentially. Web series. The pilot. pilot yeah. We're shooting in a couple of weeks. It's called Micers. It's the life of open micers here in Toronto. And as a whole in general, like anybody who does stand up in any one of these markets yeah. uh, is going to be able to identify with the whole open mic grind that we're going to be depicting in this shit. Man, I'm looking forward to it. I hope we can, yeah, I hope we can not make more the... than just the one. Because there's other... The whole game now is that yeah, you, you you have the pilot, and then you figure out Funding. whether we crowdfund it, whether yeah. what. But it's like, it, without the pilot, without like the proof of concept. Yeah. Because this is like Kickstarter or, or, or Indiegogo, any of those people that have a little gadget yeah. that they want to crowdfund, they need they to can, have that video yeah. of the concept or whatever. Yeah. This is our version of that. So, yo, I was, I was, uh, I was gonna say, Patrick, can you, can you bring up what, uh, what's his name, uh, the NHL guy that got fired today? Oh, Don Cherry. Yeah, can there's a lot of talk. So that the fucking I don't legendary. Think he should fired. Yeah, but I want to hear exactly what he said. There's a lot of. Did you hear it? Uh, yeah, it was like. It was, did you hear exactly what he said? It sounded like an 86 year old guy who said the wrong thing. Like that's essentially it. It's not like. It wasn't. I don't think he even intentionally meant it as a as a racist thing. Based I think on what was, I heard summarized, it sounds literally just like a regular old man having a regular old man yeah, thing to about, say. Well, anytime like an eighty six year old, yeah, an eighty six year old good. dude, an eighty six year old guy talking about a rem Remembrance Day is gonna get a little fucking weird <laughs> on Remembrance Day. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. You're yeah. allowed to just be like, do you have it up, Patrick? Okay, cool. Yeah, because I really want to hear. Because people have been asking me all day. They're like, "Oh, do, you, did you hear what he said? Like, do you, do you, you think it'd have been fired?" That's the whole man. It's fucking scary. Can you imagine by the time we're like 40, 50 years into this industry, like twenty seventy? Can you imagine what can get you fired then? I don't know if it's gonna be as. You, you think bad. it's gonna switch back to less aggressive? I honestly, I hope so. I really, truly hope so. I hope we kind of get a, get a handle on this, and we're just like, okay, this is getting out of hand. Like, who the fuck are they going to fire next for something? Like, the, I don't think, like, Don Cherry is, he was like my dad's Joe Rogan. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, my dad wouldn't even that watch. Generations. My dad wouldn't even watch the game, but he would watch him. He just wanted to see this guy talk about the game or just, like, talk about whatever. Like, he would want to watch that. He... He is like Mr. Canada, pretty much. Like he, John yeah. Cherry is Canada. Is Canada embodied almost? Yeah, right? of course. And yeah, like, okay, you got it up. Okay, let's hear what he said. You people love you. you they come here, whatever it is. You love our way of life. You love our milk and honey. At least you could pay a couple of bucks for poppies or something like that. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> he got fired over that. How many years was he working for the league? Forty. Four decades? Four decades, and that's what fucking did him in. 
Isn't that nuts? Like, what is it? What is it? Is it that, that they're so afraid of public outrage? Is it sponsorships? Like, what the fuck is... Uh, he, he... This is... This is um, just a perfect opportunity. Uh, he Have is they su- wanted him out? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Forever. For, like, 15-plus years now. Um, Why? Is what he me he too? Does he meet two people? Uh, no, no, no. It's not even that bad. Um, it's uh, Rogers has the rights for the NHL. Okay. It cost them a fortune. The NHL brutally fucked Rodgers. Okay. Brutally. Okay. Took them for everything. And so on top of that, the CBC is not paying for Hockey Night in Canada anything uh, okay. anymore. So Don Cherry is a fortune, like a legacy CBC yeah. contract. But they must pay. It, it's a huge amount. Like it's in the. He's make well. The thing is, he's in not, the low yeah. six figures for what amounts to about thirty minutes of work a year. Yeah. So pretty much firing this guy is a cost saving initiative. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> al- also they get to then virtue signal simultaneously. Oh, yeah, exactly. So we're saving money, Two and then we say, yeah, "Hey, they get to plant a flag." Yeah, yeah immigrant yeah. Canadians, we stand by you. We won't put up with like pu- our public personalities yeah. engaging in this kind of stuff. So for Rogers. It, it, it's a, uh, it's all win, and Don oh, Cherry's sick. like his days have been numbered for literally like ten or fifteen years. Yeah, wow. but also I, is like, that when the deal happened? Yeah, no, that's more recently. The CBC did not want to keep him on, but he was like he's like yeah. a, a Canadian he's icon. An icon. He's an icon. No, very much so. And, and even and across the border, like Americans yeah. are familiar with him. Like Americans yeah. who watch hockey Anyone, are familiar with him. Any hockey fan knows Don Cherry. Don it's Cherry. Like John Madden, yeah. pretty much. Right? Exactly. Yeah, he's exactly. Our John, yeah. He's our John Madden. Yeah. But uh, fuck, he's eighty six. He's not. It's not like he's done. Like or say, it's not like he's he's fucked. He's got hundreds of. He's got. He he's but fine. But in a fucked up it, way though, fine. it is though. I feel, watch him die quick, man. Old people, you know this, man. Old people. Once they let go but of the also work watch they him just do, move to Italy they just or something like that. Like he's got, he's got fucking him? yeah, bro. They don't have puppies in Italy. So so someone else, <laughs> someone else will hire it. him. He could probably go to Florida or somewhere like that where his likability is huge. Yeah, yes. Or he'll he, become a spokesperson for some big Canadian company still, or something. Maybe up. not in Canada. He'll yeah. never get the money he was getting ever again. But he will definitely Pre-poppy not have to work. Comment? Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, he probably hasn't no, had to he, work in a he decade. He doesn't need to work. You know? Well, he's 86. It's not like he needs, like, unless they just but come you, out with, like, a pill that says, oh, you can live an extra 100 years. He doesn't need to do anything if he wants. But maybe 86 is actually the age where you truly need to keep working, right? <laughs> I'm serious, man. Like, if he doesn't have that and he's had it for four I decades, Dude, I feel like I've, it accelerates your dissipation into my grandfather, death. My grandfather's 85, and I was like, I was like, well, what if they gave you something that let you live even longer? He's like, fuck that. Yeah? <laughs> they don't want to. Like, yeah. I, I feel like at a certain point, like, if I, when I get to 90, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be like, okay, thank God it's almost done. Yeah. But you think how that, much, but bo- when how you're 90, much? You're, you're 91, right? Or 92 or whatever. 92, yeah. 92, yeah. So that means it's like 2080 or whatever, right? 2082. Yeah. Dude, by then, I'm sure the Unless they... lifespan is going to be up 20, 30, 40%, okay. whatever, right? Well, yeah, if they can if they can improve Rogan. quality of life, if they can improve quality of life past a certain age, like if they can, if 80 doesn't feel like fucking 80 when we get there. It then... won't. There's no way. Look at, like, I listened to uh, Rogan and uh, Greg Fitzsimmons on Rogan. And he's like, whoa. And at one point they go, what were we scared of when we were kids? Because when they were kids, 50 was like, you're you're on death's door pretty much. Oh, you're, dude, you're, yeah. You know what I mean? Every, and, and man in my, every man in my family died at, like, 50, 55. Yeah, you should look into well, that. <laughs> you well, should. it's not genetic. <laughs> you, <laughs> like, you it's should, not like I have to worry about that. You should that. maybe go back to Uber Eats. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? I, I'm concerned about you. Dude, no, like, I don't know. To Rogan right now, he's like the health and virility of like a 33-year-old by like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I really feel like that always conti- that will always be proportional. So maybe by the stay, time we're around his age. As long as you age, stay active, I guess. And that's the key, man. Yeah. That's actually, the, that's what I'm saying about uh, Don Che. Yeah. He, this may fuck him. This, 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 oh, straight up, yeah. Like this could. Be, it's he's a probably huge. Bu- he's probably bummed out right in your, now in your for life, sure. right? 
because this is being the icon. I mean, you're still an icon, but not before you had the platform to shine that icon light, you know? Yeah. Now you're an icon, but you don't have the platform. You're just like... People are at Tim Hortons being like, I didn't agree what they did to you, man. Well, and then no you're like, won. thank you very much. Yeah. You're the no true one, Canadian. You know? No one likes having to find another job. No one He's does. not going to have to. It's just that's more of a – that's way – that's transcended job, though. Yeah. That's an icon. That's like being impeached Yeah. for him. NHL is pretty much – people pay more attention to NHL than government. There's no debate. Yeah. You know? There's uh, – like – the fanship and like ma- all this shit that follows the Leafs, that's way more than the election shit. Much, and shit. How much does one, like a shit seat at a Leafs game go for? I have no idea, that, but I know, know they're sold out. Like they're, they've sold out their season passes like a decade in advance plus or something. I think it's the most oh, successful yeah, no, the, NHL the, franchise, the right? The season passes, they, they're like, what? It's like grandfathered in. Like, it's a legacy thing now. Like, you can't, you can't buy them anymore, I'm pretty sure. Oh, because they're limited. You got to, yeah, like, 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 sell them. Yeah. You got to, like, like, sell your seat or it's whatever. It's legacy. Like, it, it, you will. So you buy it. You will. It must your be li- continued. Your, your, yeah. It, no one can buy them anymore. I'm pretty sure, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. That's crazy, man. But dude, like even like a Leafs game, like my dad wanted to go to one. I I can't even remember how much how dude, much cheapest tickets you seem to be able to get are against like Buffalo, uh, okay. for seventy five dollars, and you're gonna be it. And yeah. that's like the worst that's seats Buffalo. in the house. Yeah, exactly. That's fucking nosebleed bullshit. Yeah. But no one wants to go see that game. Like, what's like Leafs? Leafs versus the fucking uh, like Red Wings. Like, is that? I actually watched the Leafs and the Red Wings. Cheapest live it is one hundred and thirteen dollars. Yeah. Jesus. Fucking... NHL is one of my favorite. Any live NHL games are one of my favorite live uh, sporting event vibes. Yeah. It's such an amazing like electric energy. In I there. got free tickets once to go see uh, Penguins versus. Uh... The Red Wings, and that's the was only... it packed? Yeah, it was packed, and uh, like that was the only like sporting event I've ever. Was this? Do you enjoy? It's great. It? Yeah, it was great. You know what? Like sick I, about I can it? go and watch it live for sure, but I can't watch it on a TV anymore unless yeah. they, like except for the Raptors. Like that was at, the fucking energy was there with everyone. There's yeah. something about that. Uh, there's something about being in a very cold place that has thousands of humans. Like their combined uh, like body heat is making it like. It's like super cold, but somehow it's warm with everybody, and like it just erupts every time. Like in in basketball, when there's a shot, it's like yeah. But in hockey, what what's a sick hockey game? Final score four three. That's a crazy yeah. hockey game. game right? For the game I went to, it went to a shootout. Like I uh, went to a tie breaking shootout. Yeah, and it was like people were on the edge of the, their yeah, yeah. Just the it's fa- electric. Like whenever the uh, goalie would block a good good block, in, <gasps> everyone yeah. would fucking like even not a goal. A yeah. fucking block. Everyone's just like, what the fuck? Yeah, and a block is sick. Yeah. When it's shootout, a block is so sick. Yeah. It's so clutch. But, um, yeah, dude. But that's a lot of money. Like, a hundred, hundred it plus, is. uh, yeah. That's not, that's not something that I can fucking throw off. Do you, if you, uh, when, when you achieve your success and money is not an op- object anymore, are you going to be one of those courtside or, like, ringside kind of oh, guys? Yeah. No, no. Not at all. No, I'm not. I'm not even that big into sports. And on top of that, I I think I'm just gonna keep. I'm gonna buy stuff as hobbies. Like, I what do you mean to, buy stuff as hobbies? <clears throat> I used to like. I used to just like. I used to have a ton of different hobbies. Like things. I like. I love building stuff. Same. I, I would always love uh, like making woodworking. things. Yeah, woodworking. I I did f- like metal casting, like forger. Forge work. I loved being. I love blacksmithing. I I love doing this stuff, and I had the space to do it out in the country. Can't do it here, dude. That's one of my like super like fantasies is like to just blacksmith. kill it and <laughs> yeah, yeah, become bl- a blacksmith. blacksmith I do. <laughs> dude, I want. I'd love to be a blacksmith in like an, a live action of an, an anime. You know, that's uh, like, they actually got a black guy <clears throat> to do it. You know the? Uh, do you remember Saving Private Ryan, the sniper in it? No. Do you, Barry Pepper. Yeah. God damn. 
Is he not? Is he not a fucking blacksmith? He makes. He makes like. He does weird shit for <clears throat> sure. I think yeah. he does like wo- woodworking stuff, and then he does like riveting and cast iron things. He does. It's, he's a weirdo. Yeah, I know he's done. He's made like knives, and like he's made something for each film he's done. Uh, camping stuff. He makes his own camping stuff, like ex- yeah. uh, ex- some kind of other word Just for like way. extreme I camping I or something. That. But you like ever that? watch those <clears throat> foraging videos? Of, like, of course, the best. Those are the those. Dush. Dush. Uh, man, I can watch those all fucking day. That and that's red what, and then the. T- I would, I would kill for that. But that's the thing. Like you have to wait until you're successful. Before yeah, you, you know how much. Do it. Yeah, exactly. Bill right? Burr has helicopters. I'm gonna be a blacksmith. <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. Dude, that's the thing. You gotta have a Chappelle type setup where you're living in a farm in Ohio. Right, yeah, and then you've got like a garage. I mean, it doesn't have to be. I, in fact, fuck Ohio. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's just a, just a house that you have some privacy, dude. What I want is a fucking garage, and it's all. You know what I'm excited for? I'm excited for having a gas car and like having all the a garage that uh, that let me do all the work on my car and like you know have access to tool and die makers to like yeah. create parts because in the future it's gonna be all electric, right? Electric yeah. and other forms of. Uh, energy yeah. and it's gonna be just like iRobot was it, I think it was iRobot where Will Smith goes and gets the old motorcycle yeah. and she goes does this run on gas he's like you bet bitch <laughs> <laughs> and then she slid off the seat yeah. <laughs> so they have to put a towel under because he was revving so hard <laughs> if, I rem- if I remember the movie correctly which I don't you think remember I incorrectly <laughs> that it's not I believe it was PG-13 I don't think it had pussy um, juice on that <laughs> yeah right put Straight. that towel under you um fuck man I- I um yeah, a garage would be fucking perfect, but we live in Toronto. That's not doable. Yeah, but now keep, you, you got to think of the future. About, the future. Think, but dude, I keep thinking about uh, the idea of um like if I got me, Tisha, and a few other comics together to rent out a house that has a garage, and then you just throw on shows in that garage to pay the rent. Kind of like Art Loft. Did you ever, yeah, like Art Loft Montreal? Exactly kind of thing? like Art Loft. Yeah, but which they, Art Loft they is have a show it, in Montreal. They have it. At, they have it in like other locations. Like they they did a, a flop house in uh, what is it, California? I can't remember exactly where they do. I'm sure that they do living room shows in Toronto, New York. Like, but they wait, do wait, these, what would this show pay? I don't know what it would, what it would pay. It but wouldn't. Like, it could, I mean, let's do the math here. Garage. What would that fit? Twenty people if you seat it tightly. And then if you pack it out once a week, uh, I guess it could take, like, it's a house, right? So I guess it could, like, throw if, a little money in there, but it's not going to be paying this house off, let's be honest. The math don't add up, babe. I don't know. I'd look for something <laughs> I don't know. I'm go- I still got to look into it. <laughs> I got to look into it. <laughs> Dude, you know what you remind me of? Yeah. The fucking, when I was a kid and, like, someone would be like, oh, I have that thing. And I go, can I borrow it? And they go, if I can find it. <laughs> Fuck you. You knew where it was. I you like were... how everyone has their theories about what kind of kid I am. And it, it bought You like, were that kid for sure. If I like if I want to borrow it, you talk all about it. Oh, can I borrow that? If I can find it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no backing I, out of it. I was a nice kid. I don't know. But Kyle Lucy told me he was like he was like, You seem like the kid I would steal lunch from. And I'm like, you seem like the kid I would beat the shit out of for something like that. What the fuck are you talking? What the fuck are you talking? About? Yeah, you got some inches on him too. What a weird like. I, I hate when people make assumptions off me just because I'm nice or something like that. Like it's so silly. Well, you did get your ass kicked on stage. Right? I did not get my ass kicked. I refused to throw punches because I want to get a visa. I did take that guy down Max pretty got attacked on stage. Okay. He's playing it off like no, he, he play, he's playing I it off as if he... I fucking took that motherfucker down with ease. <laughs> I ducked under the first punch. I fucking pinned him. The thing is, everyone everyone took a little bit of time to get to me to pull, <laughs> to get pull us off. And I'm like, his arm slipped out of the pin. And he hit me in the side of the face a few times. <laughs> Dude, ever since you got attacked on stage, I'm all. Anytime I'm at a show where it's like, like you know, you we earlier we were talking about um, uh, when you when you're doing a show in a bar or a restaurant. A lot of times it's an ambush. The people there they don't know a show is about to happen. It's an ambush. It's, show. So we call Straight that up. an ambush show, where it's just like the com- you can tell the way they look when the host comes up and like does the sound check. You can tell and by their like that, eyes. Nine ninety percent of the time, like when it's like when it's that type of show, 
it's gonna be am like there's gonna be amateur comics on the on the yeah. show straight oh, up. without a doubt yeah because host, like and you're not gonna be able to win over the audience it's not a promoted show that has like people that are like um a lot of reputable comics or whatnot yeah. right so this show i just did one yesterday ambush there's a court there's a group in the back black people too they're all black i'm like yo i got these motherfuckers how do you that? say that how do you manage to say that in a way that it's offensive because i'm like yo i got yo they're gonna come on like <laughs> it's so hear fucking... my point of view <laughs> okay right, hear my see. point of view i look like you we're all the same age i don't mean they're older we're peers I'm yeah. like, oh, these people are going to, I'm like, I could do my common bit. I could do whatever. I could, okay. I'm going to get through to them. But they were the main group that didn't know shit was happening. They were talking throughout the whole set. This, people all in the front were looking back at them like, <laughs> like this. So I addressed it, but I was just so fucking mean, dude. And it's just, you know, that fine line, you got to tiptoe. And what I went out. I, I, I was just like, a show is happening. I was just so... I was not fun. I I was not fun about it. I was not lighthearted about it. I was just like a dis, I just dismissed the fun that they were having in the conversation they were having and saying, "Hey, yeah. I'm doing it was just like it fucked the vibe up and it took me like 3 minutes to regain it and it was a 7 minutes. Set. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a that's a that's a big detriment. That's a big nice I'm bad at mileage. that. That's one of the things I'm so bad at. At addressing. It's like, at addressing. It's like you if you go too soft, they keep talking. If you go too hard, the other audience members are like, "Ah, oh, this guy's yeah. kind of like." That's uh. why I was fucking weirded out when you were like when uh you addressed your roommate who came to our show. And then I'm hosting, and he's still talking. And then I'm like, "You gotta shut the fuck up!" And he would, and you're like, "Why did you say anything to him? Like, just because you saw that I did something? Like, you gotta yeah. get, you gotta get that kind of guy to shut the fuck up because he's not, he's not getting it. Everyone's told him shut the fuck up, but he still doesn't get it. Like, that's that's fucking nuts. Yeah, that's but if it doesn't uh, land correctly, it leaves this negative taste in it, all the audience members. Oh, straight up, and they're like eh. straight up. But you gotta also be able to read the fact, like you gotta read the room when everyone's like, "All right, fuck these people." When uh, when you can feel out that when everyone's like, "All right, fuck these guys," and then you be the one to say it. Then they're on your side, but if you're just like, if it's the start of the show and you're like, "Yo, shut the fuck up," then yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's gonna fu- it's gonna well, ruin. Of course, it. not that, but yeah. still, even dude, it's just like just the tone of it. It's like you yeah. don't even have to be that aggressive. You could just the tone could be slightly off, and then you really gotta rework. Yeah, they can the, they can tell the audience is is a lot smarter than people than people think. Like they they can read the they can very much read your intent. Yeah, and whether you're like just off a script or you're actually thinking about what you're talking about, all these little things. Yep, that's why I love Underground. The stoner audiences, they can they can read you so fucking well. They tell no lies. No, they keep you honest. Stoner audiences. We're coming close to an hour. I wanted to ask you specifically about something. This is actually I'm not trying to ambush you with this question, but okay. I remember like maybe five, we, six, we, seven years ago. I fucked your wife. <laughs> yeah, right. I fucked your wife. <laughs> And then Tisha comes out of the back. Come out, Tisha. I just told him. She's like, I'm sorry, Max. It's been a huge weight on my chest. Okay. No. I was going to say, what the whole concept. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. The whole, ever since this whole uh, um, wokeness saga of society started, what, maybe, what, 2013, 2014? Yeah. This whole woke thing started, right? That's when we really started hearing the concept of white privilege. Yeah. Straight up. Do you remember when you first hit, like, started hearing the concept of white privilege? Do you ever remember thinking, like, a moment in your life, even before that white privilege, where you're like, "This is white privilege." <laughs> oh, straight up, like when uh, when I would see Tisha be like, um, when I would be able to get a job just based off of uh, like the fact that my name is uh, very predominantly white, like it is a very uh, very predominantly white name, and then I'd see Tisha dro- drop a resume into a place as Latisha. Yeah. And then she'd change it and drop the same resume in as Tisha. Yeah. And, like, months later, and then that's, like, it's hard to say whether or not. Like, what w- the bites come from Tisha versus Latisha. Straight up. Latisha, like you had that LA at the beginning. They people don't uh, fucking respond. Yeah, they they just picture as, long as fingernails, she, like mm-hmm. as, <laughs> you know as I mean? much as like they don't like people will make a judgment based off of that uh, white privilege. I don't know. I I wasn't really. <sighs> um, 
you know, no, like no. on the on the well, whole topic of, you know, immigrant section, having you here, I'm like, oh, let's get your take on this. Like, do you think it's like this thing where it's like, yeah, let's level out the playing field. <laughs> but it's like there's also like it's the, it's the division of class. Like, I I don't know. Like, I lived with my dad who was uh, who was on welfare. And like, I, I know what it's like to fucking have peanut butter and toast for dinner. Like, there's nothing. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But I'm saying knowing that. Yeah. And then on the outside of the house, experiencing things where it's like, yeah, I also, different. That's I also, what it is. I also could tell that there was like a, the, like when it comes to like a law enforcement and stuff like that. Yeah, I can tell that there's definitely like a, a prejudice, a prejudice towards African Americans for sure, straight up. Like I, and even, ah, fuck, but also law enforcement, they're dicks. They they are straight up like they they harassed me and Tisha one time like we were just walking home from my friend uh, my friend's place, and they were they had a um, APB out for two Hispanic uh, large Hispanic guys, and that's be on the lookout or whatever right yeah and they they uh, sat down and they que- they stopped us and questioned us for like what was it forty five minutes. And like they were just fucking me. I I can't remember. Like I had been drinking. We were walking home. We weren't driving or anything like that. We had been drinking that night. But they were looking for two Hispanic dudes, and they sat down and questioned both me and Tisha. And I'm like, I'm white. She's black. Like who? You guys keep <laughs> let's getting, wrap this up. Like what the who, fuck? What are we doing? Let's like, wrap this. Yeah. I don't understand what. Like what are you looking for? Oh, like what? How? Did... I was drinking tonight. Like I was drinking tonight. I'm walking home. It's a Friday. I'm fucking tired. Can we go yet? And they're like, not yet. Like let's just uh, fucking settle down, buddy. Like they're just dicks. They are. <laughs> They are fucking dead. Well, what is what is your typical pullover situation go like? Oh, I'm do you have all, a technique. Oh, I'm straight up nice. Yeah, I go. <laughs> do you go? Do you go full honesty? Well, um, what's your technique? Um, when you get pulled over, what do you like? Do you it's play always, dumb? It's a, it's dependent on the moment. I never play dumb because uh, negligence is never or sorry, uh, ignorance is never an excuse. On uh, that's a very white thing to say. No, 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 <laughs> straight up ignorance. That, that Never an excuse. I my I have friends who are law enforcement. They're like that's I have I have an uncle who's a who's a sergeant, and they're like never do that. Never play dumb. Yeah, because yeah, ignorance yeah. is never ignorance will never work. They'll just be like acknowledge the fact and see what you can do from there. Um, like one time I got pulled over. I was doing one thirty. I was coming back from a job site, and I was coming from like uh, Grand Bend. I was trying to make it down to Windsor. I was going 130, 135 on the highway. As <laughs> I played a dirty, I I played a very fairly uh, dirty trick uh, on this one. I um, as I as I pulled over, I pulled over like a little bit, like into the road, and I was like, as the officer's walking up, I'm like, officer, do you want me to do you want me to pull over like a little bit more? I don't want you to sideswiped, and he's like. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, you knew you were good. <laughs> and and That's then the he, moment. he gets over and he sees that I'm covered in concrete and he's like, he gets, he's a working class. He's yeah. like, you got a t- double double in your hand. He's like, uh, <laughs> he's like, do you know how fast you were going back there? I'm like, honestly, man, I I know I was going fast. I I'm I've been awake for like, or I've been working the last 13 hours. I'm just trying to make it home. Like you have to say it in yeah, that tone. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to make it home. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and he he looks down. He's like, "Well, you know what? As long as you keep it at 125, you won't have any problems with us. All right, <laughs> drive safe." <laughs> well, you know what? As long as you keep it at 125 and white, <laughs> you're exactly. fine by me, kid. <laughs> I don't know if that conversation would have went the same if it was a if it was you or Tisha or anyone else. I don't know. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's one of those things. You know, it's it really depends on who you get. I don't think there's anything that's across the board true. Yeah, you know, no, like officers really can be dicks to get. officers can who be uh, dicks to anyone. There's generally there. If sure it's a woman, a I just get scared as fuck because I feel like women cops really try oh, to be like we're gonna... aggressive too. Look, we'll do, they're we're trying badasses to... too. They're trying to prove a point. Yeah. Always. As opposed to trying to, you can just tell leave. sometimes you're just fucking scowling in the car. Like, yeah, Jesus, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yo, <laughs> so angry. <laughs> yo, uh, you are starting a podcast soon, which I'm gonna be on. Yes, you are. You're the very first episode, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, do you want me to? Play you want to give right it a little now? spiel? 
Uh, so pretty much what it's gonna be, it's uh, it's called the Family Curse. It's uh, it's gonna be, it's about like just the black sheep of the family. Like it's gonna be, diff- it's not gonna be just comics. I have friends who are photographers, directors, are are just general artists that I uh, want to bring on and just talk in depth with them. But each guest is gonna be, I'm gonna curate an episode with the topics that I specifically want to talk with them about. Okay. Um, as as with you, like uh, we're gonna we're gonna go in depth. Um on multiple things but fuck listen uh listen in for that um and there's gonna be a rotating co-host who i'm either gonna have as a support or a juxtaposition on the topic so it's either like you got a master plan for it bro yeah I'm, as long as you got a plan dude i've been like uh, thinking about this for like the last eight months how i want it to be shot how i want it to sound how uh, yeah like, you're taking your fucking sweet time setting up that setup i thought you would have got started a long time ago but i guess you're trying to make everything but then perfect. you saw but yeah, dude, you yeah, saw it that looks great. setup it looks yesterday, great. right make it live bro let's yeah. start it up click yeah. record What's your, uh, actually, you don't have to bother plugging your gram stuff. I'll leave everything. Yep. Micers, I'll probably be plugging that out. Oh, I just want to say, uh, from my end, if you are listening from London, Ontario on November 20th, my callback comedy show is happening. That's November 20th at uh, London Music Club with Mike Rita headlining that show on Mo Ismail featuring. I'll be hosting that night. Uh, look out for that. It's going to be a banger show. Mike Rita is literally one of Canada's, like, top comics he's killing it he's been in the game i don't know how many years now he's on kevin hart's law network uh the just for laughs he's got credits up the wazoo he's the amazing. point is he's amazing he's the best one of my favorite acts uh like that i as soon as i moved to the city i'm like jesus yeah. um november 20th come out for that it's gonna be amazing uh, if the show goes well hopefully i want to start running it as a monthly uh out of that that's london music club november 20th i'm gonna plug it again uh you know all the instagram and all that stuff uh, again if you listen from apple Podcasts, give us a five-star review why not be cool i mean otherwise just be weird whatever it's up to you uh, <laughs> uh, and we post the full videos and everything in clips on YouTube. So check out the YouTube page, subscribe and all. Thanks so much for listening to the Immigrant Section. Tell your friends about it. Okay, peace.